Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, for the last, well, must be couple of years now, I've been using this basic motherboard with DDR4 3200MHz RAM. This Corsair Vengeance CL16 memory has been a pivotal part of my budget system for a while. Recently, I upgraded to DDR5. Not just any DDR5, but 6400MHz CL32 memory. Now, I didn't do this because I thought it would be a lot better. I mean, it was quite expensive. It cost double the price of the DDR4 stuff. It's still double the price. I think £52 compared to 105 But I did it so that I didn't have to switch between DDR5 and DDR4 when testing various hardware. I could just stick the DDR5 in the system. It's really handy for the newer Ryzen APUs as well. But I did get to wondering just how much of a difference will DDR5 make when it comes to using a budget CPU, something like the i3-12-300 here. And to find out, I tested a handful of games with the DDR4 memory and then compared it to the DDR5 memory to see what sort of difference we could get with the average and percentile numbers. I think it's safe to say that, well, take a look at the results for yourselves and see what you think. I'll talk you through them and then we'll wrap up at the end. So let's start off today's results with Assassin's Creed Mirage. I've tested at 1080p throughout today's video. First of all then, we have the very high settings for this game. Now on your left you have the DDR4 3200 results, and on the right you have the DDR5 6400 results. With the DDR4 memory, we're seeing 111 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 71, and a 0.1% low of 52. We did see an increased average with the DDR5 memory, 120 frames per second, so 9 frames more on average. We also saw a pretty decent improvement to the 1% low as well as the 0.1% figure, which both jumped at least 10 FPS. Bear in mind though, if you are using slower DDR5, 4800, 5200, 5600 megahertz, the differences may be less significant. I'm testing this faster memory today because it's the memory I purchased recently to test with AMD APUs, which benefit from faster RAM, of course. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next. This also has an in-game benchmark, so that's what I decided to run with the high textures and the high preset. Anytime that the presets enabled any form of upscaling, like it does here, it enables FSR, I turned it off. This applies to all of the games today. For the average, with DDR4, we saw 112 FPS with a 1% low of 70 and a 0.1% low of 42. The average wasn't really improved, 113 FPS with DDR5. We did see an improvement to that 1% figure, 77 FPS, and the 0.1% number actually dropped a little bit, so I'd call this within margin of error. It was one frame per second different. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 also has a benchmark run built in. I tend to avoid it when testing different graphics cards because it doesn't always actually give us a difference. But with RAM, we can see a difference with performance here. With DDR4, we saw 76 FPS on average with a 1% low of 37 and a 0.1% figure of 22. For the DDR5 memory, we saw 80 FPS, so just 4 frames per second more. Our 1% number was improved by 1 and our 0.1% number was improved by 2 FPS. Again, not a huge difference at all and certainly not worth it for this one, in my opinion. If you want to buy an i3-12100 or 12-300 like I'm using here, then don't be afraid to just purchase a cheap motherboard and DDR4 memory because you're still going to have a fantastic time. Don't let anyone talk you into DDR5. For Fortnite, now this doesn't have a built-in benchmark run of course, but I dropped into the same area of the map, tested it three times across three different weather and um, night slash daytime conditions just to make sure we were getting a fair readout here. 120 FPS with DDR4 with a 1% low of 66 and a 0.1% low of 21. The DDR5 result does show an improvement to the average 128 FPS, so 8 FPS more. And not only that, but our percentile lows were improved. This definitely made for a more consistent experience with the DDR5 memory, and this is sometimes more important than an average. Black Myth Wukong next. This is the full game, but we are running the in-game benchmark. Pretty much no difference here. 65 FPS for both DDR4 and DDR5 RAM kits. We also 
saw a basically identical 1% low, 54 FPS. That said, our 0.1% figure was actually higher with the DDR4 memory by quite a bit actually, 48 compared to 40. So it actually felt a little more consistent with the DDR4 CL16 memory as opposed to the DDR5 CL32 memory. Uh, the castle latency is also going to play a part as well when it comes to uh, improvements and whatnot in frame times. You know, this is going to make a difference sometimes, maybe not significantly, but it's worth doing your research when it comes to buying RAM as well. There are plenty of sites that do benchmarks with RAM and always consult those before making any purchase, to be fair. Finally then, we'll end on Red Dead Redemption 2. This also has a built-in benchmark run, ultra textures here with everything else set to high. TAA was also enabled and set to high. And the geometry level of detail and grass level of detail sliders were also set to their respective maximum. The DDR4 memory gave us 111 frames per second. This is of course impairing with our 4060 Ti as well. The 1% low was 81 and the 0.1% low was 70. A decent result here. 114 FPS for the DDR5 kit. That's 3 FPS more on average. When it came to the 1% low, we saw an improvement of 7 frames per second and we saw an improvement of 9 frames per second for that 0.1% low. So again, with this one, consistency was very much improved, though not necessarily a difference you're going to feel in actual gameplay but the difference is there if you spend twice the amount on ram you are going to get a slight improvement so um yeah bear that in mind this ram cost over 100 pounds and my ddr4 my good old trusty ddr4 cost me about 50 something so that's definitely worth considering if you are shopping around at the more entry level end of the market but now, with that said, it's back to me in the studio, slash office, slash bedroom. So overall, yes, the expensive DDR5 will give you a performance boost. Sometimes it will totally depend on the game. Now, if you're on a tight budget, you're probably not going to want to spend more than what a CPU costs on the memory. That's just a bad idea. And for the most part, DDR4 will do you just fine. Not to mention that DDR4 motherboards are perhaps slightly cheaper depending on the socket, 1700 boards for example, and DDR4 can still be found for a lot cheaper. Again, that depends on the speed, but if we're getting a slight difference in some games with fast 6400 megahertz if you're using something like 4800 megahertz 5200 5600 the difference is maybe even smaller and the money you could save by not purchasing the more expensive ram could actually be used on a better cpu instead so that's also worth bearing in mind but thanks for watching let me know what you think down below and as always i'll see you in the next one what do you think any anything to share what do you reckon? What do you think? Hmm? What do you think? DDR4 versus DDR5. What do you say? Hmm? <laughs> He's indifferent, to be fair. You don't really care, do you? Me? No. See you in the next one.